With me is Dr. Michael Oppenheimer, a veteran of the climate wars. He was chief scientist for the Environmental Defense Fund and is now a professor of geosciences at Princeton University. In 2007, he was part of a group of scientists who won the Nobel Peace Prize for their work on climate change. Wonderful to have you here, doctor. Happy to be here. How should we understand, I think when you say to people, okay, we're headed towards two degrees of warming or three degrees of warming, four degrees of warming, I think to myself, well, I sit in my room and I put the thermostat from 68 to 72 and that is a little different. Maybe I take off my jacket, but that's not a huge amount. Um, how should we think about those numbers? What really hurts us and makes us vulnerable to the climate is not the average. It's the extremes and it's the extremes that change a lot when the average just changes a little. So even if Earth only warms about five degrees Fahrenheit, which is the average prediction for this century, we're going to see sea level rising because of the warming of by an amount of two, three, four feet. And on a typical East Coast beach, for instance, that takes away 200, 300, 400 feet of beach horizontally inland. We are likely to see an increase in the intensity and frequency of heat waves. And you have to remember, heat waves kill. We had one in Europe a few years ago that killed about 40,000 people. We've had heat waves in the United States that kill 1,000 people or more. So small changes in that average create huge headaches for us. So it's the extreme weather events that are the, the, the signal to us about what's happening and the thing to prepare for in the future. Are we already seeing that now? We're already seeing some changes in the extremes that we can tie to global warming. There's already more heat waves. There's already an intensification of heavy precipitation events, the kinds of things that cause intense flooding. There's already a rise in sea level, which means we're getting events of extreme high water, like happened at Hurricane Sandy. And the critical point is we're not prepared for any of this. Hurricane Sandy or Hurricane Katrina gave us examples of how well we are prepared, or in these, these cases unprepared, to deal with these extreme events. We're falling behind. It's getting worse all the time. We're, as long as we let the world warm, we're always going to be playing catch-up ball, and we're never going to be good enough at it. You have had to have the experience of being a climate scientist, battling people on the other side who often are not scientists. Um, what is the experience been like and what has the effect of this climate denial industry been on how the U.S. policy apparatus and government deals with the issue? The denialists have been given a big megaphone by private interest groups that want to continue the use of fossil fuels, continue society heading uh, sur surging in the wrong direction essentially and through that megaphone I think they've confused the public they've tossed up a lot of dust basically I have to believe the basic truth outs in the long term the trouble is we don't have forever the emissions of these gases once they're in the atmosphere they stay there for hundreds of years so the situation is irreversible we can't wait for the dust to settle action has to begin now on the positive side governments are painfully slowly starting to make moves in the right direction. Dr. Michael Eifenheimer, thank you so much.